the Gardner Expressway above us. It was built like this on stilts to try to block out noise pollution. The rationale being, okay, so noise doesn't go into the city, it goes up into the sky. Uh, unfortunately, someone a few years later had the bright idea to put Lakeshore Boulevard, where we're driving right now, underneath it. And it actually amplified the volume by about two times the original amount. Uh, we are hitting a bit of rush hour traffic here. It should ease up around the corner. Sometimes this spot gets a little tricky, but uh, once we get past this construction zone here, it should uh, ease up a bit. So once we get out from underneath the gardener, ahead of us, you'll see condominiums. Uh, on our right-hand side, we're going to see all these condominiums over here. There will be a condominium construction site on our left. Tons of condominiums all around here. And I had uh, some people in the back here asking, so you have all these construction sites, why? Like, why are people moving here? So we actually get 50 people who move to Toronto every single day. Our population started to really take off in the 1970s. That was the beginning of that. So things like our big infrastructure projects, the CN Tower, a lot of buildings, those date back to the 1970s for that reason. So we get people moving from all over the world to Toronto. Right now our population is 2.6 million, so we're the fourth largest city in North America after uh, Mexico City, that's number one. New York City, and Los Angeles, so we're number four. And uh, what's the draw to Toronto? Why do people want to move here? So it's a good question, and the reason is that we have a very relaxed immigration process. So we have a uh, very low birth rate, 1.7 children per woman uh, born in Canada. That's one of the lowest in the world. It's actually 1.4 in Toronto. Which means that if we didn't have very relaxed visa processes, if we didn't have relaxed immigration policies, we'd have a population crisis. We wouldn't have enough people. So we let a lot of people move here every year. 48% of the country from outside of Canada. Uh, the only other city with more people born outside of the country would be Miami in the United States. The most people moving there are from Cuba, from one place. We have people from all over. And uh, yeah, so that's really one of the big drives to Toronto. Uh, another is our vibrant financial scene, our cultural scene here. Most people living in Canada actually live within 100 kilometers of the U.S. border, so we're one of those places. And if you look out, once we get past here on our left, look um, across the parking lot here, and you'll see it right into our financial district. So we're not the legislative capital of Canada, but we are the financial one. That gold building in the middle there, I love pointing that out, that's the Royal Bank of Canada building, and it looks like it's made out of gold because it actually is 24 carats of gold chemically baked into each of those 14,000 windows, and that seems really excessive. Uh, but they have a logical explanation for doing that, the Royal Bank of Canada. They claim that gold is a very good insulin, so over time they'll cut down on heating and cooling costs. It is scratch proof, so you can't steal it. Alright, and uh, this is... Ooh, Toronto drivers are angry today. Uh, this is Young Street in front of us. It goes all the way to Minnesota, just under 2,000 kilometers. Starts right here on the right. This is one Young Street. It's the headquarters of Toronto Star. Uh, that's where Ernest Hemingway started as a war correspondent, where Joe Schuster of the Superman comics started out as a paperboy. On the right, the Liquor Control Board of Ontario headquarters. You have to buy all of your booze here through the LCBO. They're uh, government-regulated sales. Now we are going under the final bridge of the day, so I do need everyone to stay seated, keep your arms down. Uh, we are good to go, Saeed. I know that was there. It's almost like I've given this tour before. Alright, 
uh, stop 18 is around the corner. We had someone who wanted to go downstairs, so we'll pull up at uh, stop 18. So there on the left is the Hockey Hall of Fame. So did anyone want to get off at stop 18? Anyone up here? Anyone for stop 18? Hmm. No one? Okay. Uh, this is the resting place of the Stanley Cup over here on the left. Good thing we have it there, otherwise we might not see it. Our own team, the Toronto Maple Leafs, 1967 was the last time they won. You can learn all about hockey history there. Uh, you can learn about things that players have done. Each player gets the Stanley Cup for 24 hours when they win. So players have been known to do things like uh, baptize their children in it. Oh, we did have someone getting off as well. One player had his dog eat dog food out of it. Uh, one player actually drank beer out of the Stanley Cup and apparently had too much because he left it behind at a bar. So now when it's on the road, they have someone accompany it around. Make sure it gets home okay. And uh, we are good to go, Saeed, whenever you are. Official sports in Canada. Hockey is one. That's our winter sport. Uh, anyone know our summer sport? Guesses? Did I hear lacrosse? Yeah, that's our uh, summer sport. Lacrosse was actually played for thousands of years in this area before Canadians ever came over here. Or sorry, before Europeans ever came over here. Uh, but we are going to head into Old Town Toronto. So one of my favorite buildings is this one here on the left, uh, this brick building with the green roof. It's the Gooderim Flatiron Building where George Gooderim, who was the whiskey distillery, had his office. We'll see the whiskey distillery in a few minutes. But in 1982, when they built this thing, it looks like a Flatiron, you'll see it when we drive by, it was considered a skyscraper. People didn't want to walk by it on windy days, they thought it might blow over on them. <laughs> Uh, if you've seen the one in New York, uh, I think you guys in Boston have a flat iron building as well. The one in New York was built in 1902, 10 years after us. They copied us, we did not copy them. But ours was the first of its kind. Today it's uh, some of the most sought after office space in the city. There's also a out on the ground level. Did anyone want to get off at stop 19? Stop 19? St. Lawrence Market, which is currently closed. Stop 19, anyone? No requests? Okay. So the St. Lawrence Market is here on the right. It's been called by National Geographic the best food market in the world. Over 50 vendors inside. Uh, it's closed right now, but if you go there tomorrow, you can try their P-Mail bacon sandwiches. That's known as Canadian bacon. To Americans. And on Saturdays, they have a farmer's market over there on the left, an antique market on Sundays. Uh, my favorite vendor inside is also a cheese vendor who has over 400 types of cheeses. And if you look behind us, I can't have you stand up. If anyone wants to get a photo, I'll duck. Uh, but if you look behind us, you'll get a classic postcard shot of Toronto. You'll see the Gooder and Platter and building in the middle. Uh, behind it, you can see that gold building, the Royal Bank of Canada building. Toronto Dominion Towers around it, so it Come really on. gives you a sense of change for how uh, the scale of Toronto has changed over time. So we are at Old Town, which seems like a pretty good time to talk about Toronto history. This whole area inhabited for thousands of years before Europeans ever came over here. Uh, the Huron, the Iroquois, the Ojibwe people living in this area. Those are our First Nations people. And in the 1600s, fur became very popular in Europe. We have a lot of beaver 
countries here in Canada. So French started to expand into the area that we now know as uh, French Canada, Quebec. It was called Lower Canada at the time. The French came over to Toronto, uh, the Etan Brule. I'm very sorry, my French is terrible. But he was the first uh, European to ever come to this area in 1601. He left, uh, the French briefly set up here, but abandoned their fort. And after the American Revolution, a lot of loyalists, so a lot of British people living in the American colonies, fled to Canada, so to this area where we are now. They were chased out by the Americans. Uh, so they fled up here to Canada and settled in what is now known as Ontario. At the time, it was Upper Canada. So in 1787, all of this area is bought out by the British. It's colonized by them. And in 1793, Toronto here is founded as the town of York. Uh, the reason York was actually the capital of Upper Canada, that British settlement, and the reason that the capital was moved here was to be less vulnerable to American invasion. It was farther away from the U.S. border, so it was assumed that Americans wouldn't come up here. Uh, the British were really afraid of Americans. This was the town of York. There was another York to the south of us, New York. And they made a lot of fun of us. Uh, they called us Little York, Dirty York, Muddy York. Our streets weren't paved yet on really bad days. Little Dirty Muddy York all in. And in 1832, we actually changed the name back to Toronto. There were petitions then. Uh, Toronto means where the trees stand in are. It's a First Nations word. So Americans are really, or the British are really afraid of Americans invading with good reason. You'll remember the War of 1812 breaks out. The Americans are tired of their ships being blocked. And guys, get ready on the right here. Uh, just kidding. This is, you'll notice we're turning on Parliament Street. Our Parliament building stood here until the War of 1812 when the Americans came and burned them to the ground. They wanted to liberate us from the British, despite the fact that about 95% of us here were British. So they burned down our Parliament buildings. Uh, Canadians are not very happy, and we decide, all right, we're going to get revenge. In 1814, we marched down to D.C. with our pitchforks and our torches, and we are going to set the president's mansion on fire. Uh, we scorched the outside. They put on a new coat of paint, a few new additions, and to get the White House as we know it now. And uh, we get the big wax car wash, so fair trade. All right, we did have a request for Stop 20, the distillery district. So we'll be pulling up there in just a minute. Uh, this was an old whiskey distillery founded in 1832. At a time when it was safer to drink the whiskey than the water in Toronto, we had a number of cholera outbreaks, but whiskey was safe. Alcohol sanitized the alcohol, and by 1850, this was the largest distillery in the world. Today, it's outdoor pedestrian space. Uh, we did have some people getting off here, so we are at a complete stop now. This is old Toronto right here. Right here. All right here, old Toronto. The bus, the tour bus is currently stopped at the harbor front. Look at all those boats, crazy. And there's a festival over there for the Pan Am games, which are coming to Toronto very soon, so yeah.